you can increase friction and wear and you can also decrease friction and wear. That's right. You just need to know exactly what to do and which levers to pull. Can you increase friction and decrease wear? Nah. Nah, you can't do that, can you? Actually, friction and wear are a completely independent phenomenon. Completely independent. Absolutely, you can increase friction, you can decrease wear. Or what not to do. <laughs> In some well, cases, yes, right? True. Yes, right. yeah. And that's why we're here at Southwest Research Institute with this guy. And you. Uh, he, he's the smart guy. He's got the PhD. <laughs> he's the tribologist. I'm just the guy that has the loud mouth. But we've been doing some fantastic testing. If you haven't watched our first video that kind of shows the background on what we're doing, essentially, Peter, explain to them what these two little things are. All right, so here we have a liner section. That came out of a full-size liner. Mm -hmm. And then a section of ring. And we cut that out of a real-size ring. Well, they ran together in the engine, so we run them together in the lab. Put one on the other, and you reciprocate it backwards and forwards. Just but like in the engine? Yeah, just like in the engine. But while you're doing it, you can measure the friction of exactly what's happening while you're doing it on this rig here. And then you end up with a wear scar. See that? That's where the ring's been running backwards and forwards. You don't even need a microscope to see how powerful oh, that, where that is. That was a lot of wear, that one. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was an example of what not to do. Right. But the other great thing is because we're running it in a bath of oil, we can also take a sample of that used oil. And then we have an incredible machine here called yeah, an ICP. ICP. Yep. So explain to them what an ICP does and how we can actually see what's wearing in the section by analyzing the oil. So the ICP takes the oil, mm -hmm. analyzes it, and breaks it down and tells you exactly how many parts per million you've got of all the different parts that are in there. In the full engine, you'd have everything. You'd have some copper in there, you might have some lead in there, and it tells you which bits of the engine are wearing out. It was super cool about that is the ICP, technically coupled plasma, yep. it actually burns the oil. It oh, burns yeah. everything, all the metals, yep. and they all emit wavelengths of light because every element emits its own unique wavelength of light. So they can actually see what's, what's happening, happening in the oil. Then we get this incredible report that shows you parts per million of every individual thing. What's in the oil, and then what's, you know, not just from the additives in the oil, but also the wear metals. Yep. Yep. Is it from the liner? Is it it's from the ring? Because we can take different coatings yeah. and apply them to the ring, and then you can see if that coating is wearing or not. And how much. Mm-hmm. When it comes to this independent phenomenon of increasing friction or decreasing friction, increasing wear or decreasing wear, one of the things we've found here is that if we take a honed surface, we actually had two different surfaces. Two different surfaces. Right? Yeah, one was a homes. rough honed yep. and one was a smoother. A bit smoother. And what we did, we actually ran some pairs where we ran the same oil. And the same ring. And the same ring. On one liner. Right. And then the other liner. Correct. And then a different ring on those two liners. Mm -hmm. And then just to confuse you all even further, we then changed the oil. Of course, because I couldn't help myself. We had to change oil chemistry. That worked the best. It was amazing. Yes. Well, but that's what chemistry is all about, right? When yeah. we're looking at creating what we call a tribofilm on this part to protect the part, you can change the chemistry and change how quickly it builds that film yep. and how thick of a film it builds. Yep. You know, but there is a downside to that protection though. Wasn't there in terms of friction? Well, there was. Yeah, yeah. friction goes up. So. But, yeah, but we were trying to keep the part alive. But yes. anyway, point being is that what we kind of found is that we call it a general trend here is that we went from an uncoated ring to the coated ring. Yep. We saw wear go down. down. That's right. When we coupled the ring coating with the oil change, wear went really right. far down. It was really. Yeah, I mean, like, it, it, like you couldn't see it. No, one of them, you literally, yeah. it was the opposite of this, where yeah. this looks obviously, one yeah. of them, you're like, did it even no, do it, anything? It, yeah, it did look like you hadn't put it in the rig. Right. And when you get the rougher surface, what we would tend to see is you can see where the wear and the wear debris 
would start to come off. Of course, yeah, yeah, because yeah. you're running this in a bath with no filter, you can see some scars. The scars, yep, yeah, that's right. So bits come off, get mm -hmm. stuck in there, scratch backwards and forwards. Right, yeah, but hey, that happens in an engine. It does. That's what's really neat about doing this kind of fundamental research is that we can isolate, isolate. all those variables. Yep, yeah, just pick one thing and change it, and see what the difference is. We need to get to the data. Okay. We're telling them all this stuff, but they, they need to see the data. We gotta show some data. Yeah. Right. What we started off with was, again, the rougher finish, which was a 325-400 diamond. Yep. And I believe that one produced, what, 83 parts per million of iron? I think iron, you're right. Yes. I believe. It's on the first one, and then about 50 on the when we changed the ring. Yeah, so the change in the ring went from like 80, yep. like low 80s to low 50s. Just changing the coating on the ring. Went yep. from uncoated to coated. Then, then we, you change the oil right. with that second ring. Correct. So we'd already lowered the wear. And it went down to like 30s. 30. 30. I, yeah, that's yeah. my memory. It's about 30. Yeah. We'll call it low 80s, low 50s, low about 30s. 30s. Yeah. Then we changed the finish. Yep, went to a different liner. Right. Went back to that the was, uncoated uh, ring. What was that one? It's like 120. That's right. It really yeah. didn't like that one. No, it didn't like that one at all. No. no. Which, it, again, the, the wear jumped right up yeah. with the original ring. With the original ring, yeah. yeah. And then, the, what did it go to? It went to like 40 was with it? the change in the coating. Like the coating really made a bigger oh, difference right. with so, the smoother finish. Yeah, so, yeah, it did. That's it was right. surprising. Like, yes. trust me, there will be another video in the future. So if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe now because we have a ton more oh. testing to do because every one of these results gives us a different question to ask. You know, in the last video, I said this matrix was growing and getting bigger. It's huge now. now. Yeah. So you gotta keep watching. We need more subscribers so we can pay for all this. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. No, but it, that's what's so fascinating is to see these little subtle differences. Well, and just being able to make those changes mm -hmm. and see that happen in real life and get the results. And then, the, so the wear, we haven't talked about how we get the wear yet. That's right, oh, that's so, right. Yeah, yeah. So when you get the wear, you, you, you take this mm -hmm. and you put that in a white light interferometer. Well, you can use other things, but we use a white light interferometer. And it shines down and we do a stripe straight down the middle. So we get from where the ring hasn't been running all the way across where it runs back to where it hasn't been running. And when you see that line, you can see, oh, well, especially on this one. Yes. You can see where it drops down because the ring stopped. You've got more wear. Mm -hmm. Oil entrainment happens in the middle, so the wear comes up and it's not so bad. And then it drops back down to really bad at the end and then stops because, of course, you've got the unwarm bit. The little ring is like a water ski. Yes. It's like the skiers coming up That's out right. of the water. And you see that curvature, yeah. so which that, is incredible. The entrainment. Yeah. You get the entrainment of the oil in the ring as the ring starts to go. And like Lake says, it, it picks it up and you get an oil film in there. So more oil equals less wet. Right. But then it has to stop at the end of each stroke. Yes. And then it stops. It's like a water skier. It drops down the water. And you see that wear increase yeah, at just, the both ends. Just like in an engine. It, it, it is. Yeah. It's, it is so neat because all the wear typically on a cylinder is near the top That's or right. the bottom where the ring stops. Yeah. And we see this exact same thing. It's so neat to be able to see that surface roughness. Like I said, you go from the one that was the rough surface, the uncoated ring, to the one that was the coated ring, smoother surface with and the, the better oil. oil. And it's you like can't it's even tell what it is. It's a straight line. You can't see it. It's incredible it's how you can go from a high of 120 parts per million yeah all the way down to 20 parts per million wear. Just, just playing with different parts. And different you can go parts, from different oils. seeing wear visibly like, visibly. oh, that looks horrible. Like anyone could tell, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, to, like that one. Where's the wear? It's like yeah. the old uh, Wendy's commercial. Where's the beef? Where's the wear? I can't find it anywhere. That's only six tests. That's, yeah, six tests. Results. Oh, okay, well, we picked the best six yeah, to right. explain what we're talking about. That's but, six of that's maybe six. like 36 so far. Yes. Because once you start playing with the oil, then you got to play with more things it's like so viscosity. Things. And yes. Oh, and, and also just different coatings. Cause right. Just, just because you've gone, well, we've used that coating now and that brought it down. And now we're using this oil and it brought it down further. Well, you could pick a different chemistry with that coating. It could go back up. Right. So oh, you've very got, well. You've got, you know, you've got and different materials and different this, that, and the other. And, and we've seen that on a couple of tests. We have, we have where actually, the yes. 
maybe one of the coating started to come off. And when yes. the coating comes off, now really bad things start to happen. Oh, yeah. No, you got really got, big wear debris bits in there then. Yeah. Yeah, nice big scratches and deep. And yeah, so just any old coating isn't going to do the same job. It's, no. it's very specific it's combinations. Then back to, we see that in the friction as well, that certain combinations really reduce the friction. Yeah. And perhaps put the wear, like we said earlier. Well, it was dramatic to see how much of a difference you can see in friction, how much of a difference you can see yep. in wear, yep. just changing those three variables. Actually, just taking two variables, right? Take oh, the yeah, surface yeah, finish out and just, just the ring and the oil alone, mm -hmm. massive so difference. Massive difference. And you can see it all in the way it changes. It's absolutely incredible. So make sure you stay tuned because we're coming back. We have again. tons of, oh, again, yes. And again. And again. And probably again. Well, and you know. We haven't uh, even done the EDX on the rings yet. Oh, explain what that is real quick. So they know, just so the uh, teaser, right? Because you yeah. want to know what EDX is. So EDX goes in and it looks at the surface really closely. And it tells you what's on the surface. Like the atomic makeup yes. of the surface. So you can see if you've got bits of carbon in there. You can see if the, the how the actual honing looks right down in very granular level. Even after that, you can then see what chemical film has been put on where the ring's been running. So you can then say, oh, well, this additive here seems to be working with this setup and it's reducing the friction. Oh no, that additive went really bad. We don't want to be using that additive with that setup because the friction went high and we can see it's really stuck to the surface and that's what's caused problems. I mean, we already know that about ZDDP. Right, you know, exactly. ZDDP puts friction up. Yep. That's just a it's, known fact. It, it did a, a fantastic job of yep. reducing wear, which we've oh, proven, yeah. yes. but it also increases, increases friction. friction. But it, I think the EDX is going to answer some of the questions it's we already have. Some, some of the questions in the traces. So mm -hmm. when, you, when you see the friction traces and they, they come down and go up and they go up because we put the load up at one point, but it goes up different amounts. Mm -hmm. And you've got trace up here and you've got trace down here and you've got a whole bunch together and they're all modeled up, but they're all, you can trace them all along and see what's happening. That combined with the wear tells you so much. This is why tribology is the coolest thing in the whole world. Friction, wear, and lubrication all happening at the same, same time. time. And we can see all the different elements of it. And it's also cool as tribology because it's the place to have the most amount of fun ever. It is. Yeah. I didn't even sleep the other night when we were after, after looking at all the test data because it was just so incredibly cool. Is, well, we, we do all sorts of different stuff here, but it's just like, tribology is the coolest thing to get into and do as a job. If you don't think that's right, just call up anybody here at Southwest that does tribology and they will, they will talk about all sorts of really cool projects we've done. Well, and we saw that at Joe Gibbs Racing. In the, in the time I was there, applying tribology yes. to a race car resulted in championships. And, and we, we saw that, you know, we saw that and we saw you talking about it and, and how that affected things. Using tribology reduced the friction, mm -hmm. increased the whole horsepower. Output. Right, because when you do it right, we want to reduce friction and reduce wear. And you can do that. You can. When you know which lever to pull. Yes. And, and when to pull them. And, th and then you go use rigs like this and instead of paying to wear out full-size engines and mm -hmm. burn all that fuel, you get the answer and sometimes you get the answer. Uh, and you, you don't even- They're, they're an don't, answer. You don't, you don't, <laughs> it's not the one you wanted, but- Well, maybe, it, maybe you do want to know what not to do sometimes. Maybe. Sometimes knowing what not to do yes. is just as important as knowing yeah. what to do. Yeah. That's but, true. But. Hey, that's why we come here, and that's why we make these videos so that you can watch it so you can get the answer. Not just get the answer, but get to understand how to use the tools to get the answers you want. Because once you know how to pull those levers, then you can really repeat it over yes. and over again, yeah. regardless of your situation changes. If you're going from a dump truck to a race car yeah. to a passenger car or to even an EV. Yeah, you can cover it, all those things yeah. if you know what levers to pull. And, and they, they need different things. Yeah, so, yeah. every application is going to have its own requirements. That's right. Yeah. As I always said before, application always dictates chemistry. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So stay tuned. There's more fun tribology stuff coming from us. <laughs>